Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's. Um, the ending of the game is a little anticlimactic, right? We we did enough to to win the game and uh, had a good performance, uh, created chances, could have had a few more goals, um, but I, I don't think it should take away anything from uh, what these guys have done over the course of the season. Um, th th these guys have been great. Um, second place in the West uh, is a, is a huge accomplishment. Two you know, a home game, a home playoff game. Uh, is a big, a big accomplishment. So I don't want it to take anything uh, away from what these guys have done this year. It's been a fantastic performance, um, and now we'll focus and get ready for the playoffs because we still have uh, we still have some work to do. Yeah, Davey, um, did you get an explanation from from the referees either on Diego's uh, disallowed goal uh, or and the the um, the shove on Jerusi that that wasn't called that obviously ended up leading to the to the corner kick. Um, no, we didn't get any explanation. They just said that the the VAR checked and the check was complete, which means that uh, not only did the linesman think he was offside, but VAR thought he was offside, which we think is clearly wrong. Um, and then the Drusi, um, they said the check was, was complete, uh, even though we think that that decision was clearly wrong. So uh, there's, there's, uh, yeah, there's nothing really much else to say about it. And then uh, the lineup decisions tonight, what were you looking to see specifically from uh, Musa Jite and um, Johan Valencia? Yeah, you know, these are, are two guys who have, um, you know, haven't had a ton of starts this year, but, um, but are guys who are really important to our team. And we've utilized our entire squad all year. We've, we've brought guys off the bench to come in games. We've brought guys into the lineup to start. Um, uh, Musa being one of those guys, I thought he had a good performance tonight. He provides a little bit something different maybe than Maxi provides. Um, but based on the opponent tonight, Musa, Musa was, uh, was someone we felt we could use and utilize uh, his qualities. Uh, and Johan Valencia is, um, you know, it, he's really important to us. And he had, a, he had a tough injury in the middle of the year, and, he, and he's come back from that. And he's, I think he showed tonight what he, what, what he can do and what he's capable of. And, um, we're going to need more than 11 players uh, come the playoffs and come next week. And I thought we, uh, I think it showed tonight that we are certainly capable of, of being a lot deeper than 11 uh, to make a successful run in the playoffs. Um, yeah, so obviously uh, Josh wasn't available tonight to coach. I uh, just wanted to ask you a little bit about the, the collaboration uh, heading into this match, the preparation that you did with him. Yeah, not, I mean, not too much changed from a, from a preparation standpoint. Um, uh, we're still doing what we do in training and, uh, in terms of uh, the week leading up to it uh, and how we were preparing for the game, um, not too much changes, right? You know, the, the only change is he can't be he can't be in the locker room before the game and, and during the game. Um, but but you know, we, we we had a good idea and a good plan going into the game of, of what we think it could look like or what we thought it could look like, um, and it did. And um, you know, Josh is obviously really important to us, and 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 when he's not there. Uh, other play, uh, other people need to step up. Other staff needs to step up, and uh, I thought we did a, a, a decent job of managing things tonight. But we'll uh, we'll be happy to have him back next week. Okay, and then just a little bit on uh, Driussi and his performance. Um, obviously, he's going to be very important to however far you go in the playoffs. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we all know what uh, you know. Sebastian Driussi, uh, at his best, for me, is, is the best player in this league, um, and uh, yeah. He's obviously very important to us and, and how we go. And um, I thought he had a you know a good performance tonight. He got the goal. It was good for him to get the goal. He's had a, you know he had a couple chances last week that uh, probably on another night he he has a couple goals last week. So it's good for him uh, to gain some momentum uh, personally, but also for the group uh, going into the playoffs. And uh, Sebastian is a is obviously a big part of this, and we know that. Yeah, I mean, for me, you see what he does on the field, right? What he's able to do with the ball in possession, creating chances, scoring goals. I mean, we we can all see that. But what a <laughs> people talk about MVP and and the value that players have. People don't understand, first of all, the the person that he is, the type of leader that he is, um, in and around the locker room, uh, his personality and what he brings for us is fantastic. Uh, secondly, the work that the work that Sebastian does defensively, people don't always see that or give him a ton of credit for it. He, the guy works 
uh, almost more than anybody on the field. The amount of high speed running that he does, the ground that he covers. Um, there's so much value in that that people don't see. You know, uh, sometimes you get, you know, the bigger players or the or the playmakers or the DPs that, you know, they do a lot with the ball, but then you know you say, what do you do, what do they really provide for you defensively? We're all about the collective, and he has a hundred percent bought into that. He leads by example, and and he defends uh, just like anybody else in the group, which for me is uh, is unique. Yeah. So Austin FC ends the season with a one-one draw at home. Going into playoffs, thoughts about how the club looks right now? Um, yeah, we, uh, you know, we look, we look good. We feel good. Um, I think this was good for us tonight um, to have uh, a performance like we had, but also there was some edge in the game, right? There was a, there, you could feel there was a different feel about the game, and we've talked about that all week. Uh, playoffs feel different. So this was a really good, for me, a really good, um, um, a really good uh, run through of what we think next week is going to look like. And it's going to be, it's going to be ramped up even more next week. Uh, but in terms of that, I thought it was good and the guys responded in a good way. We talked about, uh, you know, uh, again, we talk about the collective and, and the grinding and the ability to, uh, uh, to get through games in tough moments. And we did all that tonight. So uh, for me, we're in, a, we're in a good place going into next week. Kind of what Arch was um, talking about through UCA, I kind of want to get your feel on the officiating um, on him, you know, two goals taken away tonight uh, from the club as well as himself. Uh, so thoughts about the officiating and, and, you know, I saw, you know, some of the guys going yeah. towards the ref and you guys trying to calm things down a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's extremely frustrating, I'll say that. And we're all extremely frustrated uh, by what happened tonight. Um, you know, we could we could talk about this for a long time and go on and on about it. At the end of the day, uh, we have to focus on next week. But we certainly feel like we did enough to win the game tonight. We scored a goal that was taken back. Uh, the player that should get the red card goes down, and he now has the assist on the goal. So these things these things matter. And this isn't the first time this has happened to us. You know, so we 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 get this feeling that um um that it, that it's not the way that it should be. They didn't have a good night, in our opinion. Um, but we have to we have to now focus on next week because there's uh, clearly nothing we can do about it now. But it certainly needs to be better. One last question. Sorry. Um, just taking the lead from the second half, you said you were pretty good in the first half. Asking for Dallas. Yeah, it's uh, the, uh, this is good, and it's the same way for players, right? It, it's the same way with the staff. If you know Josh is is not available, uh, it's my job now to step up and and be in this role and. Um, you know, uh, we're part of a we're part of a good group and a good staff. So, so when that happens, um, Josh has full confidence in us to go out and, and do the job, and uh, that gives you confidence to go out and do the job. And I think I think tonight we we did pretty well in managing managing the group. Hey, David, Eric Goodman, Austin Chronicle. Um, you know, in your experience, you know, so I, I believe it's one win in the last seven matches for Austin FC. You know. Any concerns about general form? And in your experience, how much does form at the end of the regular season carry into the playoffs, if at all? Yeah, it's fair. I mean, we, we talk about in, in any sport, you want to have mo positive momentum going into the playoffs. Um, but I think, uh, you know, we also, in, those, in that stretch of games, we've also had some good, we've had some good performances as well, right? Like on the night, uh, if, if we get goals early when we have chances, uh, it changes things. So we talk about... You know, we talk about all the time, and we talked about all year, a performance worthy of three points, right? So the, we're always trying to put in a performance that we feel is worthy of getting three points, like it was tonight. Uh, you know, today was a, another performance worthy of three points. Did we get it? No. Um, but it, uh, it certainly doesn't shake our, our confidence in, in who we are. We would have loved to have won the game, but uh, what this game did for us tonight, and it, you know what? It actually might be a good thing. It gives us a little edge. It gives us a little a chip on our shoulder, which we all think we're at our best when we have a chip on our shoulder. So, you know, good. Everything happens for a reason, man. So maybe that gives us a little edge we need going into next week. And then real quick, just for some of the players who this is going to be their first experience in the MLS playoffs, what's the, what's the top lesson, the one lesson that you're going to hope to kind of communicate to them this week? Yeah, you know, we've, we've already kind of started to talk about that a little bit, but, you know, it's hard to fully explain it until you've experienced the game and you've been in it. Um, these games are different. The playoff games are different. There's a different level of intensity. There's clearly, you know, every play, every decision matters. It's one game. Um, 
yeah, it's hard. It, it's hard to fully grasp until you until you've been in it. But we have a lot of guys in that locker room with a lot of good experience in this league. Uh, we have young players or players who haven't been in this league before who who haven't played in a playoff game. But um, you know, the character that our guys have, uh, I don't think it, it it's going to be a problem for them in terms of dealing with the moment. Uh, I think we have a good group that, that's capable of doing that, uh, and we'll be we'll be ready to go next week. Coach Stu Myrick from the Horn. Uh, Kind of going off what Eric said, you know, one win in the last seven contests. What's the probably two biggest challenges that the club needs to work on before next week's game, which at least first glance looks like Real Salt Lake? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we need to when we're at our when we're at our best. Um, uh, we're good with the ball. We're creating chances. We're scoring goals. We've been a team. We I, I don't know the exact number of goals we've scored this year, but we're we're one of the top teams in the league in goals scored, right? So that's 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 who we are, right? Uh, so we need to continue to do that. You have to take your chances, right? You have to to, to score goals, but more importantly, especially in the playoffs, we've talked about uh, how important it is for us to be really good defensively, collectively understanding what our roles are uh, in the way that we defend. Um, Set pieces are going to be a big factor. We saw again tonight. Uh, a lot of time, these these tight games, the games are decided on set pieces. So those are, that's something we'll continue to focus on and um, uh, and be ready for, for for that challenge next week. And again, as I said, looks like could be Real Salt Lake. They won at their house. You guys won here, so you split. What's something you take from those contests that you can? apply to next week's playoff game, assuming it is Real Salt Lake. Yeah, I think it's, it's Salt Lake. It is Salt yeah, Lake. Yeah, it's Salt Lake, yeah. So it's going to be Salt Lake. Um, yeah. Sorry. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're a good team uh, led by a good coach. Uh, uh, they compete. They make life really difficult for you. Um, we're, we'll be watching them and studying them this week to see the, you know, the exact details of, 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 of how we're going to approach the game. But regardless of if it's Salt Lake or, or anybody else, um, uh, we need to make the game about us. We're, the, we're at our best when we make the game about us. Uh, and when we play at Q2 Stadium, that's when we've had our best performances, regardless of, of who the opponent is. We will absolutely respect the opponent. It's a good team. Um, but we'll focus on us as well this week and make sure that, that, that we do what we do. Yeah, and just two quick notes there. Austin FC has scored 65 goals this year. And on timing for the playoff game, we have not yet received confirmation from the league on which day that game will be played or the time. But we'll make sure we let you know as soon as we do. Jorge, go ahead. Actually, just following what uh, Eric and uh, th what they said, uh, the, only, the only win in the last seven games, it was, if I'm not mistaken, against uh, Real Salt Lake. Is that like... Uh, Make you feel better, you know, like team make make them feel better because that was the that was a win the last time that you you face each other. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't think it matters too much that it was that it was Salt Lake, honestly. Um, uh, again, um, yeah, one win in the last seven, but uh, in that, if you go back and look at it, uh, we've had again we've had some good performances. It is still about winning the game, and we would have loved to have won a couple more games in there. Uh, uh, to, to gain really, really good momentum in terms of results going into going into the playoffs, but um, to be honest with you, man, it hasn't. It has. It, it does not shake our our confidence, right? Um, three points tonight, we would have felt really good about. Uh, but again, we feel good about the performance and where we are uh, going into next week. And let's take two more so we can grab some of the guys before they leave. Go ahead. Uh, yes, Jorge Chavez, football en vivo. Uh, we noticed that Valencia started ahead of Pereira. Was that kind of a it done to help out the both the defensive backs because they put looks like Cascante and and, and Gabrielson played much better th uh, than they've had recently. Is that because Valencia was there to kind of help? I mean, yeah. I mean, Valencia, Johan Valencia, um, he likes to defend, right? Like he, he he does a good job for us defensively. And Danny has you know some different qualities, but uh, they're two very good, very young players. Um, so yeah, it was it was about giving Johan now a chance to play um, uh, at the expense of Pepe tonight, uh, at the expense of Danny Ferrer, excuse me, um, uh, tonight. But but I thought he had a, I thought he had a really good performance. And listen, in the playoffs, um, you're going to need everybody, and it could be Johan, and it could it could it could be Danny. So it was good for him to get 90 minutes tonight. And both of, I have no doubt both of those guys uh, are ready to go next week. Um, 
who plays, uh, we'll see. But uh, I think we're, we're confident in both of them. Uh, hi, Davey. It's uh, Eric here with uh, Football and Vivo. Just had a question about, uh, like, how would you rate the teams that work in defensive transition tonight? Uh, Counterattacks have been a bit of an issue over the last couple weeks. Yeah, and it's something that something that we've uh, that we focused on coming uh, into the year. Uh, we call it our active defending or the way that we're defending while we're finishing attacks. Um, yeah, the game maybe got a little stretched in the second half, um, where we it was a little more open than we than we would have wanted to. But I thought for the most part, the way we managed the transitions was 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 pretty good. Um, and we were picking up second balls in and around the top of their box, especially in the first half. Um, became a little stretched in the second half. Obviously, you need to go back and watch it again. But um, it's something that we tried to focus on because we knew it was an issue for us last year, uh, conceding goals in transition. And, we, and we've, tried to, we've tried to make that better. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Coach. Uh, you all can follow Emily Alvarado, who will lead you in the hallway to some, where some of the players are located. Thank you.